fellow nerds, we are talking Fallout Season 1. And oh, what a Season 1 it was. Hmm. And... You can't say that. I can't. <laughs> oh, what a first episode of Season 1 it was. <laughs> <laughs> I could say it, Dave. I not necessarily mean it's true. Or at least I know it. But... well. I watched all of the episodes, so I can help fill in any gaps that maybe uh, you guys are missing. Yeah, I got through four and a half. That's good. It's a good start. So what is a vault? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so when you go to the bank, it's that thing that has all the money that isn't yours. And there's no money in it for it. It's all digital. (laughs) No, I got to say, speaking of the vault, I'm glad that you started with that because... The attention to detail in this show is top-notch. We were talking about it in our trailer breakdown that uh, nobody on YouTube ever saw because I think it got like a copyright strike or something on it. But if you watched us live on Twitch, you uh, you did see our breakdown of it. Um, and yeah, uh, if you have played any of the modern Bethesda games or even, I guess, uh, the original Fallout 1 and 2 because a lot of the details are from there as well, um, you'll notice that the uh the down to the wallpaper the clothing everything was spot on like they just pulled it directly out of the game and uh i was worried i guess i don't know if worried is the right word i was thinking back when we were talking about um the shows we were most looking forward to last year january um we were looking forward to the last of us and i thought at the time that fallout was also coming out last year so i was sitting there thinking boy Two post-apocalyptic, uh, you know, shows. One with a more of a comedic tone. I wonder how the two are going to compete with each other. And while this is a totally different beast from The Last of Us, I'd say, in my opinion, having watched the uh, uh, the full season so far, I mean, it was it was good. I'd say it's on equal footing. You know, the one thing, obviously, I only watched the first episode, but I loved mm-hmm. the comedic timing. That they had, I mean, some of the lines they dropped was just great. Like when she's like, "Oh, what's your sperm count?" Yeah, right. And he's kind of like, "She's like, oh, you don't check that every, you know, with all of your checkups or whatever. They should, they should have that every checkup." And I'm just like, "Oh my god, they just it has everything you want from a fallout because it's, you know, this nuclear wasteland, but it plays all these fifty songs and has that aesthetic. And you saw that mm-hmm. in like the opening yeah. with." Uh, Walter Goggins' character when he was a cowboy at the party, like the TV they were watching and the way the city yeah. looked. I was like, okay, these people obviously love the game and wanted to carry that over. They didn't say like, you know, let's change it up a lot to what we think it should be. They went with the aesthetics from the game and it worked. Mm-hmm. You know what I think? I think it's awesome for me that I've never played the game because I get to view this show like fresh. You know, yes. I don't know what's coming. I have no idea. That's I what I was hoping for the most, is the fact that we had you, Dave, having not played the games. You've got a bit of a fresh perspective, a different perspective even. So you can tell us, you know, especially for Keith and I, who really love the series. I think that was one of the things uh, way back when, when we were uh, both newer employees. We definitely bonded over. I remember us chatting quite a bit about uh, Fallout 4 when that came out. So... We we may be a bit, um, you know, have the uh, the rose colored uh, glasses on. So I am very curious to hear what uh, what you thought about uh, the episodes that you saw so far. I definitely think it's better than uh, the Last of Us. Yeah. You said you thought it was on par with it. I definitely like it more than that. Okay. Um, everyone seems to all the characters seem to be, you know. Like her coming out of the vault and just being this nice person, right? You know, and just like so naive. The, yeah, within the first two hours, everyone's trying to kill her. You know, that's just a, a rude awakening. And but she mm-hmm. still stays the same person. You know, she's that. I don't know how old she is in the show, but she's been that way her whole life. And even though this has just happened to her, she's still like when she um, runs into um, uh, the night Maximus. Uh, yeah. Maximus, when she runs into him and, the, and he's stuck in the uh, in the suit, mm-hmm. and she shoots off those the cockroaches off of him, 
she's still like, all right, well, I saved your life, but I, I don't know if I trust you because everyone I've met up here has tried to kill me so far. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> I don't know if I should trust you. But, you know, there's it's within her personality. I, I like how it's, um, it just seems to flow. It's a good show. I don't <laughs> like the Maxim's character at first. Seemed like he didn't say a lot. I don't know who's supposed to be the the player character. Who 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 could you play? It, as? it would know. be Lucy. She would have been the uh, the quote unquote player character. You're always the vault. Okay. Player. Yeah, and I've um, yeah, you know, I spent some time thinking about that, but I said, yeah, you know what? I don't want to know because, but now I know. Oh, but no, I don't want to know because I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to ruin the series for me because of the way it's going. I'm thinking Walton Goggins, right? His mm -hmm. character is cool. He's been alive for how many years? 200. In 19, at least. Yeah, at least. Yeah, because he was yeah. like... Yeah, he was an adult. Like, with... yeah. So, that's that's crazy. What And those things are keeping him alive. The radiation is keeping him alive, not so much the drug. The drugs are what's keeping him sane. Because uh, what ends up happening, um, he's what's called a ghoul. Uh, mm -hmm. And the way that that happens is like um, an extreme amount of a specific type of radiation just blasts your body and it radiates you like from the inside out. And uh, it can cause you to heal fast, but it also totally dries out your skin. It makes you irradiated. You prune up, your skin peels off. You look like a zombie. And mm -hmm. eventually, um, just after a matter of time, you become what's called feral. Your mind is just too heavily irradiated. That's what happened to Roger. Right. And so that's why uh, he does the drugs to keep his mind fresh, because uh, otherwise he may turn feral as well. You know, one of the things I laughed at, which is a total nod to the game, when she, when Lucy's getting ready to leave the vault, mm -hmm. and he's like, it's a big world out there. You have no idea where you're going. And that's how you feel. Like, the first time you step out of a vault in the game, it's always... Okay, which way do I go? Because some area, yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> but, you know, you go the wrong Never direction and you're facing things that you shouldn't face till like, you know, 20 hours into the game. So you're like, well, eh, I'll just walk this way. We'll see where we're going. If I run into, <laughs> like, if I run, if I run into some behemoth mutants, I'll right. turn around and go the other way. I got to say, like, um, Speaking of the the beginning of the show, going back to that, mm -hmm. I was, I guess I knew that it was going to happen, that they were going to show the bombs getting dropped, but I guess it didn't occur to me how horrific it would be. Like, it was, um, it was almost like heartbreaking just watching, like, you know, the, the little girl, is it your thumb or mine? Yeah. And holding it up. And, the, and he goes, no, 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 it, it's okay. It's all right. It's just, it's probably just some fire. And it's like, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not a fire, dude. <laughs> no, yeah, it's just a fire. Then you see another one hit, and mm -hmm. then another one. It's like, ho. Oh. So that was L.A., I think. That was L.A., yeah. Yeah, LA. The, the bombs hit, like, all over. It was, uh, um, they ended up, uh, you know, all over the world, essentially. Uh, so, so far, based on the actual canon, we know that um, the United States was destroyed, China was destroyed, and we know that the UK was. We don't, they haven't specified, well, in Canada, they haven't really specified any other countries, but those are the ones that the games say for sure were. Those are some big countries. Uh, yep. So it was Russia, is that what they're saying? In in the uh, game series, Russia was pretty much already um, like a third world country. That's why it was uh, the United States against uh, China. They are like the main superpowers. Huh. Russia had run out of um, resources by the time the Great War happened. Well, we don't get political. <laughs> it's so. it's not. That's just you know what the game is. Yeah. So um, so it's eight episodes, right? So I have three and a half left. Mm -hmm. But I just couldn't. I just couldn't cram in a three another that's, three hours. That's understandable. Weekend. I made the poor decision of staying up until two thirty in the morning Wednesday night, getting through episodes because they dropped at nine a.m. Eastern time. 
So I was watching them. Um, I ended up, uh, like I said, I stayed up way too late to uh, uh, getting a couple of episodes knocked out. And then I watched the rest of them. After we were done streaming, I watched, I think, like another two episodes. And then I watched the rest of them on Friday night. Damn. So that was literally the only way that I, I was able to get through them was just staying up way later than I should have. Did you have to uh, work on Friday? I did. <laughs> Good man, you made. I had the right to work choice. Thursday and I had to work Friday, so you know, great decisions on my part. <laughs> well, I'm an at adult. You, at least you're working from home. No. <laughs> true, true. Imagine if you had to get up and fight traffic to get to work. Oh no, thank after you. After that, yeah. if you're 24, I, yeah, I feel for you, Dave. <laughs> What's that? I feel for you. you. Feel for me? Yeah, I I feel for you, having to deal with traffic. As much oh. as you do. Oh, okay. I, I felt like Shaka Khan there for a minute. You... Shaka Khan. Okay. Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Shaka Khan. Let me rock you. Let me feel for you. <laughs> Doug's like. <laughs> and once Doug's again, like, yeah, I, I deep cuts <laughs> of music with not your status quo. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, Keith. In the uh, in the first episode, when Lucy is uh, interviewing with the Vault Council, and she's like listing off her traits, did you catch that she was basically going through her special stats? Yes, <laughs> that was so, awesome. Um, one of the one of the funny things about uh, the game, Dave and uh, Keith, in case you didn't know this as well, uh, when the original game came out, they were attempting to use a uh, tabletop um, rolling thing that had already existed for the stats. For the character, it was called GURPS. And uh, the company that had invented it said, absolutely not. We looked through, you know, the um, the plotline of your game, and it is absolutely horrific. We do not want to be associated with it. You cannot use our gaming system. And so they basically used GURPS, but called it something different and called it special. <laughs> but it's essentially the same thing. So what they said when that happened was, Gerps. <laughs> but yeah, Lucy's <laughs> listing off like, you know, um, I'm good at science, not as good as my dad. I'm d into acrobatics. Uh, I'm decent at, uh, you know, shooting, but uh, uh, only for fun. It's just a hobby. And it's like, and you can actually see as she's wandering through the wasteland, her putting some of her skills to use. And uh, I don't know, maybe she's even leveling up. I was going to say, what level is she at the end of season one? <laughs> Uh, I'd what say maybe she got to level 10, 12. You know, I, I saw Scott Pilgrim again the other day. Yeah. And they should have a little thing. Are we, uh, are we uh, doing a tangent time? No, no. This oh, has to do okay. with follow-up. All right. Um, you know how he goes to the bathroom and it yeah. shows the, and the P uh, yes. line goes down? They should have that for, like, when she's gaining points and stuff. Just have it pop up. <laughs> that would be hilarious. I, that would, I think, have made it even funnier as if they would have, like, added little, you know, game things here and there. Yeah. Uh, what I'm hoping for season two is that um, we get to see some of the uh, terrible development strategies made by uh, Bethesda. Uh, maybe the dog can get caught inside of a wall. Um, maybe an elevator will disappear completely. Uh, maybe you'll touch a car and immediately die. <laughs> There'll be a there'll be a fat boy sitting there, but you can't pick it up. You can't pick it up, yeah. Oh no, no. Oh, better yet, you pick up a mug that was marked as stolen, and now everybody wants to kill you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I cannot tell you well, how many times I've accidentally done that. I'm trying to get something else, and I accidentally pick up like a pencil. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, look at there's a fan. I can get, I can break that down for a lot of useful stuff. And then you pick right. up like the mug that says stolen on it. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, like everyone's get him. You're like, you, I, please tell me I saved a minute ago. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, well, uh, I, I'm going to just tangent briefly. Uh oh, where's the button? It's hit. Oh, good, teeny tiny tangent. Ha. Ah. I, uh, I was playing Fallout 4 a couple of days ago, and um, I got the hacker perk, which uh, lets you um, use your pip to log into a robot, kind of like the way how they were, you know, taking the, the thing and opening up the vault doors and everything. So uh, I, I used my pip hacked into a robot, 
and I got it so that way it wouldn't um, attack me and my companion anymore, and I kind of forgot about it. I didn't realize that in some occasions, I don't know why this happened, it's got to be just a, a bug in the game. Every now and again, if you fast travel, the robot will fast travel with you. However, uh, what I did is I went into uh, the town of Good Neighbor, and the robot came with me, and even though it wasn't attacking me, it was still marked as an enemy by everybody else in the town. And uh, one of the shops in there has a fat man sitting on the back shelf. And so what uh, what the uh, local townspeople will do whenever there's a threat is they'll grab the nearest weapons. This dude ran over, grabbed the fat man, shot it at me and the robot. <laughs> Dave, just so you know, the fat man fires mini nukes. Mini nuclear bombs. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. Like that. I know. It's more like... <laughs> then it keeps mushroom cloud. And then you have to restart from the last place you saved. Oh. Unless you okay. shoot it far <laughs> enough. Uh, that, that was my tangent time. <laughs> We're rolling back to regular time. Or you got now, something else? I noticed something when we were uh, when we were talking or when we were talking. I noticed something when we were introduced to this show's version of the Brotherhood of Steel, and I'm wondering if you caught this as well, Keith, um, or even Dave. Did you notice when the uh, the airship arrived? They almost looked confused, like they didn't quite know where it came from, and they seemed surprised even that it was there. See, I thought it was just because they were recruits; they weren't squires yet. No, it turns else? out it's because they're a different chapter. The pe the people that came with the airship. Oh. And the showrunner basically said that, uh, because people were asking him, saying, you know, so is this the same airship that is in Fallout 4? Because it looks identical. And if you, uh, if you, you know, dig into the name of it, in the show, prior to it airing, they were referring to it as the Kaswenin, and I might be mispronouncing that. But all that is is it's just a variation of the name Pridwin from the same book. Where the like name the is uh, where the name is taken from. What's that, Dave? Like it, what is that called? Is it like they're anagrams? Kinda, yeah. I don't know if anagrams are the right word. They're just two names for the same thing. It'd be like okay. David and Dave. They're two names for the same person. Douglas and Doug. Keith and... Keith Defer. Keith Defer. <laughs> and... The most unmasculine name ever. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, the, so what was funny is he, he left it really kind of open in his answer. All he said was, you know, essentially the, the two names are the same thing. And so that did answer the fact that, yes, it is technically the same ship. He did not answer if it is all of the Brotherhood from Boston, from Fallout 4. And the reason why is uh, Todd Howard, uh, the director of Fallout at Bethesda, basically said, you've got to keep the, um, you got to keep that a little more wide open, a little more vague, because we want people to have whoever, you know, whatever sort of ending they decided on, whether they destroyed the Brotherhood of Steel, whether they sided with them, we want to keep it open enough. So the only thing that you're allowed to state for sure is, yes, that's the same airship, and that's it. Full stop. Interesting. It makes sense yeah. playing the games, because you choose different paths, different things happen in the world, so... Yep. But I did find that interesting that uh, they were, you know, trying to keep it secretive prior to the show coming out, even though, like, it looked identical. Most people could could see that and be like, mm, yeah, that's the Fredwin. But so I always thought, the... too, it was something like, you know, you see a Star Destroyer in Star Wars. They all look similar. They have the same blueprints. I just thought it could have been another one, you know, based off the same blueprints. So it looks... Well, the, the reason why it can't is uh, the lore behind it is they built the Fredwin out of Rivet City from Fallout 3. I did not know They that. actually ransacked the city, yeah. So, that's that's what makes it even more difficult for them to, you know, it was like one of a kind kind of thing. So, do you so think Rivet Michael City Rapport... 2. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo, yes. <laughs> Rivet City South was also ransacked. <laughs> sure, sure. What were you, you saying, Michael Dave? Rappaport just plays the game and he wanted to be on the show? 
Maybe. Because he's kind of a bigger name for compared to who else is on the show to just have such a small part, you know? <laughs> I yeah. bet he just said, hey, can you put me in there, man? Yeah, he may be friends with, like, Jonathan Nolan and stuff and just said, hey, I love Fallout. Can I do anything in the show? And he's like, yeah, sure. Swing by. Right. Yeah. It's like when... Uh, yeah. I almost called him Roger Craig, not the running back from the San Francisco 49ers, but... Oh my God, Daniel Craig. Yeah, Daniel Craig was in Star Wars, The Force Awakens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, were there any more movies after that for Star Wars? I don't think there were. Yeah, there was The Last Jedi. No. Fun fact for Dave, the trailer came out eight years ago today. Oh. Wait. For the, the worst Star Wars movie ever? Attack of the Clones? That came out decades no. ago, dude. Rise of Skywalker? No, 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 no. Last Jedi. <laughs> the Last Jedi funny. is the worst Star Wars movie ever. Yeah, you're right. No, not at all. Rise of Skywalker is worse than any it other is. movie. It's so bad. It's so terrible. In your humble opinion. It's oh, So it's you think Rise wait, you think Rise of Skywalker is better than The Last Jedi? No, I don't. I think okay, they're about then. <laughs> then how can it be the worst movie when there's I said they're about even they're about even it just like Rise of Skywalker extended the crap that was in uh, The Last Jedi it, it changed the things from The Last Jedi but hey we're talking it, it, it was an extension of crap is what it was one of these days we're going to have to have to hash this out <laughs> <laughs> I think if you go back and watch oh, our spoiler filled Fallout. review of The Last Jedi, you'll see us arguing about every little detail. It's fun. Go back uh, and watch it. I don't I don't think yeah, I was maybe, uh, part of the channel uh, yet at that point. You were not. Yeah, and actually I missed The Last Jedi. Keith went to the movies. I couldn't make it that night. And uh, his review was really surprised the shit out of me when I saw it. Oh, the crap out of me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Dave's review well, really surprised the crap out of me. <laughs> I, I really was surprised after I saw it. I, I was really looking forward to it because you said it was so good. And after I saw it, I was like, "What? Did we see the same movie?" That's how I felt. <laughs> but let's get back to Fallout. I, I'm sorry, we're tangenting too much. But that's what we do here at Not Your Status Quo. Dun dun dun! Absolutely. Boy, I feel uh, I feel, uh, I feel burning, burning inside. inside. It's strange. Better drink some more Nuka Cola. That's what happens with the Nuka. Mm, man. Hmm. You know, it's funny. You said you were playing Fallout Four. I saw today that uh, playing Fallout on Steam is up like three hundred percent. Yeah, the I show saw that too. Out. And. They're going to be releasing, Bethesda is going to be releasing an HD update to the game. To Fallout 4, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah. and uh, it is one? set to break all of the existing mods out there, so yay. <laughs> they said that uh, it is filled with just top-of-the-line bugs, so can't wait for that. <laughs> they can't have you a release without... the entire world. <laughs> can't have a release without a ton of me. bugs. <laughs> You gotta watch the release date and then wait two weeks. Mm -hmm. Well, no, you get it the first day, you laugh at all the uh, crazy stuff happening, and then the next morning you get up and download a 26 gigabyte patch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no more room left on my uh, hard drive. Oh, my gosh. That was one of the one of the reasons why um, I, I just I couldn't play it on my PlayStation 4 anymore. It, I ran out of room. Because like every time they patched something, their their update for it was stupid big. I may have to I get have no the... experience with what you talk about. <laughs> I may have to get mm. that version for the my Xbox Series X. Let me know how how it plays if you do get it, and then I'll tell you uh, um, all the best uh, big booby mods. <laughs> Excellent. I knew <laughs> we were on the same page. Got... He's, been, he's cracking jokes. You know, when I was watching the show, I was wondering how serious it was going to be. You mm -hmm. know, because it is Fallout. That is a right. serious event. But they have kept it kind of light. 
you know, especially Lucy's whole attitude is really, that's really light. Yes. And then Walton Goggins, um, the, the ghoul, cracking jokes all the time. That was really cracking me up. Like when um, that dude, he shot that dude in the neck. He fell behind that that he, thing, and it, he gets started. He started to get shot at, and he lines up. He ends up next to him, and he's like, "Here, I'd give you a piece of taffy, but you got a hole in your neck." <laughs> I tell you what, in the first couple of episodes, I did not like Walton Goggins' character. I just, uh, oh man, he was just miserable. He was mean. He was cruel, and I'm just like, ah, there's nothing redeemable about this guy. But one thing that I love that this series did is it helped kind of redeem him in the end because over the course of the episodes, they help break down his character a little bit more and a little bit more and you get a few more flashbacks and you you learn now kind of like why he is the way that he is and why he's doing the things that he does. And you can see in his own sort of uh, weird wastelandy way, you know, just the, a hint of compassion for uh, yeah. some of the folks out there. It's like... Uh, Little, 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 uh, tiny shite, shine, shining light, you know, of, of compassion here and there, but, uh, he's just yeah. so cruel. Like when he saved that dog. Sure. What, you thought, no, the dog, he, he saved the dog. What do you, what do you mean, sure? That's, that's, uh, he stabbed the dog at first. Yeah, he well, saved he him saved after, but he saved him after he stabbed him. And then and did you see the so episode? Boy. Where he shoved him in uh, the um, soda machine? I haven't seen that, no. Oh, God. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> He's such a dick to this poor dog. <laughs> well, and the, and yeah, the people well. who got him out of the grave, he wasn't, you know, he's like, oh, you, the last mission sounds like your heart's not into it. <laughs> right. and he's, I'm just like, oh, okay. Well, they're all dead. Yeah, this ain't going to end well for those guys. Nope. How, how did you like how they titled uh, this uh, that first episode? Like it, it just it starts off the end. <laughs> I knew what was coming. Reality. And then when well, you see how, him that's... spinning his little lasso, I was like, mm -hmm. "Oh, that's pretty." Mm -hmm. Wonder if he learned how to do that, or if it's just CGI. And then he kind of get <laughs> the guys like, "Give us the thumbs up." I ain't giving you a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. then, well, Daddy, why would you give him the thumbs up? I was like, man, they're already starting off. I know this stuff's going to come back. We're going to see a lot of the stuff. And I love it when shows start getting, setting things up right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, you know, Jonathan Nolan, who did the first season of Westworld, he did some other seasons, but we won't talk about those. The first season of Westworld was tremendous. I mean, the way they dived in and out of timelines seamlessly was tremendous. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm, you know, I'm hoping that we get a lot of good quality, you know, plot lines running through Fallout. But obviously, I've only seen the first episode, which I really enjoyed. Well, it turns out, speaking of Westworld, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, it turns out he is, uh, he has been a fan of Fallout for quite a, a while. The opening of Westworld was specifically made in reference to Fallout 4 with the Institute. So when you see the uh, the Da Vinci man, you know, with the arms like that, as they're dipping it into and uh, putting the skin, that was taken almost uh, directly from uh, Fallout 4 in the making of the synths. Oh, wow. He said he, had, he said he had played the game, and he was like, oh, my God, I need this in the show. I never noticed that. I never made that connection. Yeah. That's yeah, so nice. he's been a fan of the series for a long time. Which, I'm glad. I'm glad. I, I, I know that in some cases... In very rare cases, if you have somebody that isn't familiar with a with a large series, it can turn out good, like Andor. But I think in this case, it really helped that he had such a um, a love for the series, because it really shows on screen how how many things that they got right. And uh, I got to say, the only people who are screaming angry words about it so far that I've noticed anywhere are you know your normal internet uh, rage machines. Heck, there's people already. Hey, there's a woman. It's woke. Oh, really? The, are the like the nerdtronics are saying that stuff? Oh my god. Heck, there was people. No joke. People were already complaining about Captain America: Brave New World, Deadpool and Wolverine, and the Thunderbolts. They're like more woke garbage from Disney. It's like, uh, you've you seen haven't seen it now. And you don't know that. No, there's no way you could know. Anyone who uses woke 
it seems like 90% of the time it means there's not white people in this. There's not enough white people in this for me. And it's like, come on, get over it. Come on. Some, some... I think Bill Burr says about what people say about woke. Woke is just, you use it so much now, it's just something you don't like. That's all it is. Yeah. That's all it is, yeah. It just means I don't like this. Yep. It doesn't, it doesn't even have a, a meaning anymore. Yeah. It's bereft of intelligence. Don't, yeah. Don't, yes, don't I love give that. any That's reasons. Good. Just throw out some buzzwords. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, I wish it, what was what did Peter say? It's uh Oh my god. Peter Griffin from uh, Family Guy. We're gonna need more hints. No, it's like boring and pedantic or <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> Shallow. Yeah. Shallow and pedantic. Yes, that's... Shallow and pedantic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna say that about everything. What'd you think of uh, Deadpool and Wolverine? Shallow and pedantic. <laughs> Hello, More <laughs> shallow and pedantic from the Marvel Studios. <laughs> At least they got honest reviewers out there like us. Yes. Yeah. So, one of the things that we end up finding out, so, uh, spoilers for you, Keith, if you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind at all. One of the things that we end up finding out is uh, in the beginning of the first episode, you brought this up where he tells his daughter, you know, I don't want to do the uh, the thumbs up thing. And it turns out that's because he was actually hired by Vault Tech, the company that made all of the underground vaults that, uh, you know, essentially experiment on people. Um, they hired him to be their spokesperson. We saw and that so in the he was a little bit, didn't we? Yeah. So he was the one who invented the whole uh, Vault Boy with the thumb up. He came and that's up with why that he and he was down every time he sees it. Mm hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we don't oh. find that out until episode six, right? Where he's doing the actual commercials. Uh, what, is it not until episode six that he's doing those? All right. Well, at least that's the when you scroll through. Okay. The show that's the that's the one where he's mm-hmm. standing there, in black and white, like that. We also find out that um, it was his wife that got him that job to be the spokes- yep. spokesperson. Before that, he was mostly doing like a lot of cowboy flicks, and that was what he was mo- what he's known for primarily was doing all these uh, cowboy movies. And he wanted yep. to kind of branch out, do something different. So he got this advertising job. Turns out his wife is a pretty high up executive at Vault Tech, so high up that she is aware of the experiments that vault is planning on doing, which not a lot of people knew, even at the company. So she was in fact, there was, high up then. Yes. In fact, there was kind of a, um, a joke in one of the DLCs of uh, a Fallout 4 where they were, they had kind of a, a sales facility set up at a theme park in order to sell more vault spaces. And um, they had told these scientists, okay, so here's the experiment you're going to... Uh, Put in these uh, these tapes, and they're going to have subliminal messages that'll make people do things. And what they didn't tell the scientists is, we're also going to pump the audio broadcasts into your room. So while you think you're experimenting on other people, we're experimenting on you. <laughs> <laughs> and Paltech, they were so most of the companies, as uh, you'll end up finding out, because we end up seeing that uh, they're all kind of in a big boardroom together with Voltech. Most of the companies in the Fallout universe are horrible they do god awful things um a little fun fact uh for the place that we work at um i was teaching a class on uh you know uh, attendance points and um it, there are very few situations where you can where you can make it a positive thing and so uh for the uh, final exam i like to use you know a, a truly horrifying company to be my uh, my final assessment example and um, I've been going with Robco from Fallout, and this last time I taught it, I went with Vault Tech. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> you bought? No. Yeah, we know bought. <laughs> oh no, no, I didn't. Uh, I did not think of Vault. Huh, Should have. No, but um, yeah. So we end up finding out that through all of this, uh, he's getting you know Walton Goggins' character. He's getting more and more kind of like disenfranchised with it, the more he finds out because as he's doing all of these commercials and uh, you know having to schmooze with all of these people, he's learning a little bit more about what this company does. Is be- he's becoming more and more kind of jaded, more uh, more separate from it, and it's actually affecting his marriage. 
And I think once he finally finds out how much his wife actually knew and what she was planning on doing with vault for the sake of keeping, you know, uh, making the company number one, I think that's what finally broke their marriage because we end up seeing in episode one, uh, you know, they're, they're saying, so wait a minute, why is, why is he doing, uh, you know, birthday parties? This doesn't make sense. Oh, didn't you hear alimony? So we know that obviously they eventually got a divorce, which would explain why maybe he didn't make it into the vault. And he was, you know, out at a birthday party when the nukes hit. Yeah, when it happened. That too. Yeah. <laughs> that too. But uh, we end up, we, we find out in, I want to say it was either the second to last or the last episode that, and this has been, you know, um, a theory that's been floating around for a while, but no one really knew for sure. But vault were the ones who dropped the first bomb. Spoilers. Wow. They don't, they don't yeah. share that until season three. They had Thanks. a huge meeting about it. It was vault Tech, it was Robco, it was West Tech. Um, the, you know, all these uh, um, big companies that we're all discussing. And they uh, they were basically like, uh, and if we get you involved, all of you companies help us out with this plan, we'll let you guys have your own vaults and you can run whatever experiments you want. And they're going around the table, and it's it sounds like a, a pitch meeting, like of uh, who can come up with the worst idea. And this one guy's like, uh, "Oh, I've got a great idea. We'll put one guy in a vault and just a box of puppets." <laughs> that poor guy. Right. <laughs> Another one. Uh, oh, I know. Let's put a bunch of people in there that are uh, getting over drugs and then hide drugs. Ah. <laughs> and it's like, oh wow. Mm, they are the worst. <laughs> they are Hyper the capitalism always Hyper -capitalism. ends well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> real real boom to the economy. <laughs> Looking out for the little guy. <laughs> always. Tricky yeah. game of little guys, uh, I guess, if you want to call them that. How do, how'd you like those rad roaches that were like uh, crawling all over? Um, Dave was spoke about it a, a little bit ago. We just talking about them crawling all over. Um, uh, what's his name? Um, power armor. Yeah, crawling, crawling over Maximus's power armor. Oh man. Is he Knight Titus? Is that his name? Well, that was the name that he stole. Yeah. Yeah, Knight Titus. So. Yeah, that was that was the knight that well, he. That's the name of the armor. What's that? Is that the name of the armor? No, 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 no. no. The guy who was in the armor before Maximus took it. Chose he was that name. Titus. Yeah, he was okay. a knight where. Maximus yeah. was just a squire. Yeah. In the Brotherhood. Where Maximus, I knew Maximus was a squire. I thought you were going to say where Maximus was just a day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but was... you know, he, by the way, I, 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 obviously you're not there yet, Keith. I almost feel bad saying it. But when they get that squire to replace him, and, um, you know, the guy just basically says, yeah, I'm going to go tell on you. Yeah. You know? After he, seconds after he was branded, I mean that's not loyal at all. <clears throat> well, it's loyal to the Brotherhood, uh -huh. and that's it's almost like a cult. And I think somebody in the show, I don't remember who it was, somebody actually says it sounds like a cult. Well, did they just assume that he killed them? Because I mean, he did. Maximus didn't even explain it. He just said no, he's he dead. No, he didn't. I was he surprised by that too. Right. He should have said, I didn't kill him. You know, mm -hmm. he's just dead. I got in the suit. But he didn't have to, he didn't have to say that. And that, so the guy just assumed that he killed him. But he I guess at the same time, the way that it looks, the fact that they had accused him of injuring his friend, uh, um, Aspirant Dane. I think Dane was his name. Oh, the but one yeah, who the got the they, shrapnel or the... Yeah, the yeah. Boot. The fact they accused him of that... It wouldn't look good, you know, reporting back to the Brotherhood and like, oh, another guy died that I happen to be associated with. They, even though he might tell them the truth, like, uh, no, no, he died. He was in a fight with a bear, you know. It's not likely that they would believe him. They'd be like, oh, really? He just, he just happened to die. Everyone seems to <laughs> die when you want to move up mm -hmm. in the ranks. So I took it funny. as, I, I thought it was weird that he didn't explain himself, but also I kind of took it as. He probably figured it's not going to matter. Well, then he, well, one second. 
Um, <laughs> when we were watching that scene, oh, I was watching it with Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. or, and she, when the bear died, she goes, Aw. Aw. You're going to kill me. The bear's about to eat him. The, the giant murder machine. Aw. Hey, it just was hungry. That bear. <laughs> It's it just yep. wanted some baked beans. Wanted to peel open that can. And just so you know, Sierra just redeemed a Gilbert Godfrey. So how dare they hurt that innocent little bear? All it wanted to do was munch down. Probably had cubs it needed to feed. And you guys are feeling bad that it killed <laughs> Night Titus. Boo freaking who? <laughs> well, and he's like, all right, so... He lets the guy, I, I don't know, he, he tells the guy, please let me out of here, after he just tried to kill him, and he shuts down his suit. Mm -hmm. And he's like, please, you can't leave me here. When you were just trying to kill me, of course I'd run away from you, you <laughs> dummy. And he's like, don't leave me here like this, please. And then he, after saying, please, don't leave me here like this, he says, I will find you and kill you. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's my motivation to come back and help. Right. Right. Uh huh. <laughs> I should probably let him out of the suit because I don't want him to have to have a hard time finding me to kill me later. We might as well <laughs> right. make it a little easier on him. So, uh, Even what ends Sierra up happening? Said the poor bear, though. <laughs> the poor bear. Oh, no, no, no. Not Sarah. poor bear. Uh -huh. It was only radiated. And on a killing rampage. <laughs> oh my gosh! How did you like all the uh, all the barrels that were in the cave? That's again, that's another thing you see in the games all the time is uh, all of these uh, companies. And again, companies in the Fallout world are the worst. They're all terrible. You can tell that somebody had been hiding radioactive waste in that cave, and so there's like just stacks and stacks of barrels. Where and... else should they put it? Near the <laughs> elementary the school, Doug. I'd rather have yes, a there too. <laughs> but, oh my gosh! What, one of the things that um, I do like that this show did, and I don't think it's done well enough in the games anymore. But what the show really did was it kind of um, added to the fear of radiation. You know of what it can do because Lucy took just a little sip of irradiated water, and like I mean. That was that was pretty much it. It for her, like she was down for the count. You can, you know, uh, in the games, you can take a couple of sips out of uh, out of a toilet, and you know you're good. You get a little it knocks out some of your health, but uh, like you know, it doesn't kill you. Not until you you get at least I'd say what eighty percent radiation, then you're in the danger zone. As long as you have some rad offs, you know you're okay. yeah. Right away. Right away. We're not Ryanair. Right away. Right away. Which I do like the fact that. Um, uh, Maximus did have some, you know, plugged it in. I, I guess I forgot that it's in like a, uh, in, in like a medical bag and you actually have to, uh, you know, stick it into yourself like that. And well, and I, I like that the, in the first episode when Lucy got stabbed, she'd get a stim pack out of her first aid thing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, and, nice. <laughs> yes. It's always so great when you find stim packs. But I was laughing because I was thinking during this, I'm like, if they had them in the vault how did all of them get out because when you're in the wild in any fallout game you find them everywhere but then i was like oh they probably had them just as a medical device everywhere before oh, they yeah, yeah. went into the thing but it's great you find a hospital and you're like breaking into stuff and like oh, <laughs> look at all these stim packs <laughs> i'm gonna mm -hmm. go fight that behemoth now <laughs> I don't think I'm done. uh then you reload your save and you're like okay don't do that yet <laughs> <laughs> we'll mark it on my map I'll come back later. <laughs> oh, that's that's another thing. I'm so glad. How how cool was it? Uh, how often you know they they used the Pip Boy? Um, I don't know exactly how many um, you know different screens that it had uh, in reality, but they did mention the actors did mention that it was a real working prop. And so I love how she used it for so many different things. It really uh, kind of called to its uh, to its utility. She's able to use it, like in the first episode, to find out that that guy was irradiated and therefore from the surface. Uh, she's able to uh, to use it when she's testing different areas to see for radiation. She's able to use it uh, to plant a tracker, um, to be able to uh, you know inside the head, and uh, you know be able to keep track of where it was going, which is neat. Like, I don't what head. 
<laughs> oh yeah, Keith. Sorry. What uh, are <laughs> you even talking about? What I mean, this is making no sense. It was cool that the Pit Boys worked. I wonder if you'll be able to like buy them at some point because they were yes, monstrosities, and I loved it. It didn't. They didn't like try to make it all sleek and everything on their wrist. They were ginormous, and I was like, yeah, that's what. Yeah, we you, can actually, uh, you can actually. You can pre-order Brady's from the Bethesda. Arm. Go ahead, Dave. I said it's like Tom Brady's left arm in football. Just oh, the play there. yeah. Uh, you can pre-order them right now from the Bethesda uh, shop. That is cool. Yeah. What? Well, my my question is, my oh, I just oh, Gilbert okay. ended. Five minute clock went off. You can't hear it, but the people in the people out in the chat can hear the do do, which means the five hmm. minutes is over. Boop 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 boop. Oh, next one's done. I was hoping that at the end of the series they are announcing like Fallout Five. That would have been nice. I don't know when that's going to happen, though. You know, it's how long these games take to come out. You know, like the next Elder Scrolls game, they're like, 2029. Mm. They're like George R.R. R. Martin getting books out into the wild. <laughs> but these games are so huge, and, and they keep getting huger. So, you know, you understand there's all these cities you can go to, and it just takes forever to mm -hmm. develop them. They just come up with little mini games every once in a while to keep us interested. Yeah. As uh, as Lucy is traveling around, I also like that um, as she's like you know gaining experience and uh, you know learning new things. I like how her um, not only does her attitude change a little bit, like uh, David pointed out, her untrustworthiness. Uh, she's like uh, you know like everybody up here is trying to kill me. I also like how she's altering what she wears too. She's adding a little bit more armor. She's picking up new guns, and it's identical to like playing the game as you're moving through the wasteland you're picking up new things you're taking you're essentially looting dead bodies in order to uh improve your gear <laughs> or you find a city with a shop in it sure but and then uh, you oh drag, drag love... all this crap you find in a building back and sell it all and buy some more bullets and... i love the uh the shopkeeper from the first episode the shopkeeper was oh, a real, real honest episode. to god vault dweller i thought all you dipshits were dead <laughs> That must have been episode two. That wasn't an episode. Oh, one. episode two. Okay, all right. Wasn't it, that was right when she came out of the vault. All I that you see it... when she comes out of the vault in the first episode is her walking, and you see like the Ferris wheel and stuff. Okay. And then they show oh, more of the Brotherhood. Is. Okay, so yeah, that must have been episode two then. Yeah. Yeah, that dude that uh, they, they chopped his head off. <laughs> uh, yeah. I forget oh, what by did. the way, Keith, she uses a ripper to do it too. Oh, yeah, I cannot wait to see that. Sorry, Dave, go well, ahead. Top in the head. Well, he gives it to her. Yeah. It's like, you don't got to take me. You just got to take my head. As long <laughs> as my head makes it there, we're going to be fine. Um, Yeah, but he gets his leg shot off. And like that. I know. By, you know, by the ghoul. And the way they fix it, it it's just crazy. I thought he adjusted to that very well. <laughs> you know, walk out into the desert, into the wasteland. Just moments later. I mean, maybe they're used to that kind of thing, I guess, but I don't know. So, obviously, the ghoul has the bloody mess perk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which, it's a, it's a stat that you can get in the game, Dave, that uh, anytime you shoot somebody, the violence is, like, tripled. It makes, like, limbs explode. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, blood and guts fly everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and oh my gosh, that uh, that that like revolver, rifle, pistol thing, whatever the heck that thing was that he had, man, did it do damage. <laughs> yeah, it was like, like a revolver no, shotgun. I like how it, it was labeled "boom" on the bottom yeah. of it. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and something boom it explodes. Yeah. I was like, when he got surrounded in that town, I was like. You know, he wouldn't be over 200 years old if he didn't know how to get out of something like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that scene was excellent. I thought that, that action was excellent. Did you get to the episode where she wandered into the supermarket, Dave? No. Or I'm sorry, not wandered into the supermarket. She was sold. Sold? No. Yes. Okay, so at one oh, wait point... A minute, wait a minute, Walt Goggins sold her. So he yes, could get he did. Medicine. Yep. Yes. Yeah, and that machine that she comes out with, I forget, I don't know what the name of that machine is. 
but she comes up with basically her hand up and says, <laughs> carrying it yeah. out with her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, you're going to be harvested. We're going to harvest you for uh, for uh, body parts. Yes. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> so at one point, uh, we kind of briefly mentioned this before, Keith, but um, what Walton Goggins' uh, character, the ghoul, what he has to do throughout the series is – he has to keep uh, taking these different drugs in order to keep his mind clear to not become feral. And that's like his biggest fear. He's been, you know, he's been around for over 200 years. I think he's afraid having seen other ghouls, you know, it happened to them. This is why he's like constantly doing drugs. And it's also why Lucy's tranquilizer dart does nothing to him. Yeah, that was in the trailer too. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he got shot twice in the back in that battle. And yeah, he, just, yeah. he just walked it off. Mm-hmm. But what he ends up doing is like he he realizes he's uh, out of drugs. Well, I think Lucy broke them or something. Is what ended up happening. Yeah, she dropped them. He, That's right. Yeah, she dropped the case the of them. So yeah. he decided he knew where there were a bunch of um, essentially like drug dealers, uh, raiders in this uh, super duper mart, and so he sold Lucy to them for a bunch of drugs. <laughs> and not and only good did she get out, she <laughs> yeah, brought right. them. She brought him some medicine, well, what, what he wanted, and then she got out herself carrying that robot. Yeah. That was uh, so the, badass for a, for a uh, vault dweller. The robot was a Mr. Handy, and the best part was is uh, just before he sold her, uh, in like um, retribution, he cut off one of her fingers. And so the Mr. Handy, who fully knows that he plans on harvesting her organs, decides to fix her finger first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's just it's part of his program. He's like, um, go ahead and lay down right here. We're going to get you all fixed up. Oh, wow. Thanks. You know, gives her a new finger, uh, uh, s- stitches it on. And, uh, go ahead. Try. Wow, it works great. Great. OK, so uh, and then he starts his his saw starts spinning. OK, this will only take a moment. It won't hurt at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she goes, what, 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 what are you doing? Oh, we're just going to harvest your organs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And it was so matter of fact about it. It was it was great. I love it. It's great. <laughs> Just he's he's such a robot about the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. What what was what's that floating robot on uh, the Clone Wars? Ezo or something like that. The the medical one. Yes. It basically has the same voice as him. It's it's hilarious. <laughs> it's a calming voice. Yeah, we're gonna fix you up. All right, now we're going to harvest your organs. Right. You know what that <laughs> reminded me of? What? A Princess Bride. I haven't have seen you guys it seen that movie? Oh, yeah. I've, I haven't seen it in a long time, but I've seen it. So when they uh, when they capture uh, Wesley, the, the Dread Pirate, they take him down to this, like, underground, um, like, cave thing under a tree or whatever. And uh, he says, um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, we're going to heal you up. We're going to let you rest. We're going to... You know, do all of this, and and uh, then we're going to kill you. And he goes, well, why are you going to all this trouble, you know, getting me uh, getting me good to go? And he says, well, you know, it's just our personal belief. Uh, we uh, just don't feel right um, torturing and killing a man that, uh, you know, can't defend themselves. So we're going to heal you, and then we'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good. <laughs> That's very 1984, isn't it? <laughs> is that when that came out? No, that's the the book. Oh, oh, you were refer- okay. Very nineteen eighty four. We'll heal you. You'll you believe in us, and then we'll yeah, it. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we have to do the right thing and heal you first. What? <laughs> <laughs> also, I it's a lot like party. um, it's also a lot like Invincible. They're doing the same thing with Nolan. Omni-Man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Healing him up, uh, making sure that he can actually defend himself. Then they'll execute him. <laughs> yeah, we never execute anyone when they're... It's like, wait, why? <laughs> wait, just hit me when I'm down. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to feel better and then get all positive and then you right. kill me. Right. How are you feeling today? Uh, my lung still feels punctured. It's weird. Our scans all say you're great. Nope. Nope, no, no, <laughs> We saw you dancing before we opened the door. Wasn't me. Oh, no, uh-uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> we saw you on the counter. 
<laughs> you know that song. You got me on the count. One me. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shaggy. <laughs> yeah. That's Is that another deep cut? That's another deep cut from NYSQ. <laughs> Oh man, but uh, yeah, I I really love the way that this uh, first season played out because I mean, they hit on so many different things that you'll find in the games. Like I said, that it was so detail oriented. There are, um, you you kind of grow to love and hate each one of the characters for their own specific reasons. I think Lucy is the only one who just kind of remained good, like kind of stuck to who she was throughout the whole, um, you know, first season. But uh, when you, but when, when everything kind of like culminates towards the end and you find out like what, what led everybody to this point, it's, you can tell there, there has to be a second, maybe even a third season. There's no way because once you get to the last episode, it's like, and everything just finally comes to a point where, you know, all the characters, all the factions and it's like, oh, and so spoiler warning real quick for anybody who still has not finished the series here's your spoiler warning i will give away what it turned out the guy had in his head it was a device that would help start a cold fusion reaction that could power all of california and so that's what he had and that's what the everybody enclave wanted guy? to get their hands on what's that the enclave guy Yes, the Enclave guy, the scientist, yep. When they mentioned the Enclave in the first right. episode, I was like, excellent. Mm -hmm. That guy, he just he couldn't keep it together, man. He lost his head. <laughs> ah. oh, Did anybody pay for a dad joke? <laughs> but yeah, so not only does, you know, not only does uh, Lucy want it so that way she can, she doesn't know what it is in all honesty, but she wants it so that way she can trade it, hopefully to get her dad back. The people who took her dad want it because it turns out the leader of that gang was the woman who invented it 200 some odd years prior. She is also from the past, but it was stolen by Lucy's father, who is also from the past. And it turns out the experiment that was going on in Lucy's vault, they were a section of three vaults, 31, 32, and 33. And 31, <clears throat> all of the people were frozen. They were all former vault tech employees. And 32 just got decimated. 32 got decimated. Raiders took it over, killed everybody inside, and, uh, you know, all the crowds. And it clearly had happened several years prior to the uh, the start of the first episode. Yeah, I wonder how long. Lucy's brother. Yeah, when he went into that vault, and it was just. Mm -hmm. It looked like some of the vaults you run into in the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, Again, I wasn't understanding just... that. When I was watching uh, that guy, um, what's his name? He was on all those Disney shows. Um, he was hilarious as a kid. I think he was on Hannah Montana. He was the kid who ran the, the little tiki stand. And don't okay. ask me, you know, my, my daughters were of age to watch Hannah Montana. I didn't watch it by myself. It was just, it, you know, they were watching it. I, I caught uh -huh. it, okay? Sure. But anyway, he's on the show. And him investigating, um, I didn't understand what, <clears throat> what it meant, like, all the overseers for 33 came from Vault 31. Yeah. And that's, that's what it I'm meant. At. I don't know where that's going. So all of the overseers were all former Vault Tech employees from the past. They were all frozen. The Vault 31, it's like two rooms. And the rooms mm -hmm. are just filled with all of these cryogenic containers filled with people. Did they show the it past. in the show? Yes, they did. Was Philip J. Fry in one of them? Yes, he was. No. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. That would have been funny. Uh, if if they did have an Easter egg like that, I didn't catch it. But, uh, yeah, it it was this idea that they felt that only a vault tech employee with management experience could properly run one of these vaults. So anytime 
31 or 32 needed a new overseer, they came from Vault 33 or from Vault 31. It just happened to be Blind Al. <laughs> I, I was struggling to figure out where I had seen her before. Uh huh. And it just came to me. Yeah, there's there's a lot of uh, uh, pretty big names in this show. I was thinking they could have just put Wanda Sykes in that same spot, and it might have been even funnier. You know, she really wasn't playing as funny of a role as she does in Deadpool, though. No, she wasn't. No, she was no. definitely uh, you know taking on more more of a, um, a serious thing. But I do it like, like uh, it got a lot more serious in this last episode I was watching. Yeah. I do like how when everybody is voting for the new overseer for uh, uh, Vault Thirty Three, I love I love how like the guy standing in line. Look, man, I, I'm sorry. It's just uh, I'm gonna vote for her. Yeah, yeah I, I, I caught that. I got well, that. no, it's just I think she has more experience. Yeah, I caught that. Well, I'm just letting you know I'm not voting for you. <laughs> I know. Will you go? Off? <laughs> you know that's why we have private voting booths, so you know, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> right. And then I like how he even goes to the voting booth. He's like, oh, God damn it. Who am I kidding? Yeah, <laughs> he, doesn't he doesn't even, even vote, vote for himself. himself. <laughs> and then he lost by one vote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's um, it's kind of twisted. The fact that that was one of the things that I've always wondered in playing the games, like what happened to the, to the vault tech employees? Like, they they set it up to where all of these experiments would run, and you end up finding out in, I think, either Fallout 2 or Fallout 3, you find out that vault and the Enclave were working together. That was 3. Uh, essentially, what, what they were trying to do is most of the experiments were trying to find out how humans would react in different stressful situations because the idea was they wanted to eventually form a colony on another world. And they wanted to, uh, you know, rocket people off of Earth. But they figured, okay, you know, this is going to be a very long trip. We need to make sure that they don't, they aren't, um, they don't go crazy in, uh, you know, in the meantime, that they can make the long journey, things like that. And so a lot of these experiments were to test and see if they were ready for space travel. So let's, let's freeze some people and see whether the guards will protect them. Uh, let's, you know, take a bunch of addicts and uh, let's, let's find out if they can actually... Um, you know, fight the temptation of, of uh, you know, doing more drugs if we hide them away. Let's uh, take a bunch of kids, kill all their parents, and put only the kids in the vault and, you know, uh, try and weed out the, the strongest and the best. It's like all of these horrifying, twisted experiments. But as far as the Enclave was, was concerned, the ends justified the means to help build a new, better America. See, now, I have a question for you, Doug. Sure. Um... When they were walking, when Maximus and Lucy were walking on the railroad mm -hmm. tracks, she says, so tell me how the world has been for the last 200 years. He's not now, how old is Lucy? Just leave him in the bag. There's a spider hanging from the ceiling. You said, you said, how old is Lucy? Yeah. Because she said, you know, how has the world been for the last 200 years? And then he said, Maximus said, um... The bombs were dropped when I was just a kid. So, how does that make Maximus over 200 years old? No. So, what he's referring to is the town that he came from. He came from a town called Shady Sands. And somebody at some point blew up that town. So, when he hears bombs dropped, that's what he thinks. That's who he wanted he, revenge against. He, yes. He thinks that's what, uh, what Lucy's talking about. He's not thinking the great war that took place 200 years prior. Okay. So, yeah. So how old is Lucy? Lucy, I want to say she is maybe in her late 20s. She says she in ever... the first episode, because she said, I'm so-and-so, but I still haven't found a husband to breed with, or whatever, but I can't remember what she said now. Yeah, I don't remember either. <clears throat> Shoot. I guess I'm going to have to go back and rewatch the whole series again. Because, you know, the ghoul is incredibly old. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I didn't know if anybody else, besides ghouls, had that kind of longevity. Yes and no. Um, all of the uh, all of the Vault Tech employees that had themselves frozen are technically that old because they've been around for that long. So Lucy's father, he's one of them. 
He's been around. He was, uh, you know, a vault Tech employee prior to the bombs dropping. Um, Blind Al, she was a vault Tech employee. Yep. That's why she won the election. Yep. Uh, the leader of the Raiders who uh, kidnaps uh, Lucy's dad. She... I still don't understand. I don't know how she has been around for that long because she wasn't a vault Tech employee, but she's also from the past. And she knows Walton Goggins' character. Yeah, and she knew that Lucy looked like her mom in that first episode. Mm-hmm. So I don't know where she was at, how she survived, like what... I, she's not a ghoul, clearly. Um, so I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if somehow she snuck her way into one of those, like, frozen chambers or what happened. Uh, hopefully they'll answer her, de- you know, what her deal is. But we end up finding out that she had tasked Walton Goggins' character with uh, spying on his own wife. Because she suspected that uh, she's the one who invented the cold fusion thing. vault bought out her company. And so she suspected that vault was up to something. And so she, uh, you know, gave him a listening device and said, hey, I need you to uh, sync this up with your wife's uh, Pip-Boy, and we're going to try and find out what they're up to. And he ends up listening in on one of their meetings, this big meeting between vault Tech, West Tech, um, uh, Robco, and all of these other companies, listens in, and this is when they announce, um, what would uh, make people want to buy a vault? Well, the fear of the bombs dropping. And how are we going to ensure that the bombs drop? If we drop them ourselves. (laughs) That is crazy. And, and like, it gets silent for a second, but then everyone's like, oh, yeah, hey, that's a great idea. Okay, cool. We'll help fund this. Right there. (laughs) We'll we'll help fund your horrifying plan. (laughs) Yeah, you got it. We got, we created a solution. Now we got to create the problem so people will buy our solution. Yes, that is exactly it. Well, you gotta you gotta get them to fear it a little bit first, and then drop the bomb. Because mm-hmm. you heard on the news like hey, we're seconds away, or you know we're closer to nuclear war than we ever ever been before. And it's like, especially oh my gosh. people running out to go buy buy a vault, you know, <laughs> storage in a vault tech. I like uh, I like when the, at the birthday party. The uh, the weather announcer he's like, why why are you making me do this? Huh? Why? Nobody's going to care about the weather if there's no nothing around for anyone to care about the weather. And it's like you got to imagine, like in that world, how everyone must have been feeling. And then as soon as the bombs drop, you see exactly like you know what becomes of humanity. Immediately, you've got people who have their own you know home fallout shelters, like what existed in the the fifties when everybody thought that you know uh, Russia was going to nuke the world or something. So you, you see these people going into their their own little uh, um, bomb shelters and punching, knocking people out. Like, ah, oh, we don't have enough room. Get the hell away. We don't have enough food for anyone else. Mm-hmm. Just, well, just so you mark. guys know, if it came down to it, you guys are both welcome in my fallout shelter. Oh, thank you. Is that Wait. where you are right now? Mm-hmm. All right. What experiment are you going to run on us? Uh, <laughs> as long as there are no follow-up questions... None. <laughs> I have no how... more questions. All right. We're going to see how much, how, uh, how much uh, Sprite a human can drink. Oh, God. <laughs> all, all, of your, all of your food and water will be nothing but Sprite. Yes, that'll be it. Please, no more. <laughs> For the love of God, drink your two liter. Drink your <laughs> breakfast two liter. Oh, yeah. God. This one's raspberry. What's well, for dinner <laughs> tonight? <laughs> Oh, you already know. <laughs> oh, some more Sprite. Our sponsor, t- show, them, show them their uh, sponsor gear behind you there, Doug. The Sprite Cups. <laughs> hey, you too can have a Sprite grenade. That's a thermal detonator. Sorry. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on. <sighs> it's probably one of my favorite things that I've got. Always happy when you find one of those. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what is it? Uh, episode two or whatever. Uh, Lucy is wandering past this, wandering past a farm, and uh, 
uh, this guy is like he, he's beating on and kicking this uh, water filter and uh, um, she's like well, what are you doing What's, what seems to be the problem well I can't get this uh, water filter to spit out any water and she goes well, what's in there metal well, did you try putting water in the water filter? Yeah. <laughs> and he looks so confused. <laughs> and then, yeah, then he asked you to be his wife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won't live for long, I swear. All this can be yours. <laughs> I'm kind of sick, and I won't live for long, and I need a family. Like, yeah, all those are very tempting offers, but... <laughs> <laughs> she's she's so polite about it all, too. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I'm already married. My husband tried to kill me. <laughs> right. Now, one of the things that I do want to point out, again, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, poke my stick at Ryan Airy and uh, Screen Crush, but at one point, uh, the the new, um, not Aspirin, the new Squire that, uh, you know, goes running away from Max. Thaddeus? Thaddeus, Yes. So when Thaddeus goes running away, his foot um, is crushed by Maximus's armor before he pulls out the uh, yep. the fusion core. Yep. So he doesn't have a stim pack. He has nothing to heal. He's just been wandering for like miles and miles on this crushed foot. And he knows that if he doesn't do something about it, if he doesn't get it healed, he's going to get it infected. He'll probably die, you know, whatever. So what he ends up doing is he finds this, and this is like the second time he's shown up in the series, this uh, doctor that uh, was hanging outside the town of Philly and uh, he was selling a cure-all and he was basically trying to tell everybody who passed by him whatever was wrong with them my drugs will cure whatever you have and so this guy you know it's like oh yeah you've got a, a hurt foot I have drugs that will help cure you you know you just give me uh, something that you have Thaddeus trades him the fusion core that he stole for this cure-all which it turns out turns him into a ghoul. Oh, boy. we know this because instantly he heals. And as we know, when ghouls are exposed to any kind of radiation, they heal almost instantly. Poor Thaddeus. Now, one thing that they don't really explain well enough, I don't think, in this series, like you hear little hints of it here and there, but the Brotherhood of Steel are. I don't know if racist is the right word. They're specious they think that only humans have uh the right to live on earth and everything else is an abomination that needs to be destroyed how do they eat uh, they they kill so, so they that, cows then how are they gonna eat well they'll, they'll raise the cows and then kill them to eat them but they're still an abomination anything that oh. isn't a human is an abomination or a tool to be used um, so ghouls, even if they're not feral, they can't stand them. They're an abomination. They need to be cut down. So, you know, people like uh, Walton Goggins' character needs to be killed because he's a ghoul, not for what he's done, but because he happens to be a ghoul. And so Thaddeus knows. He already knows this is how the Brotherhood is. And so if they find out he's a ghoul, that's why Maximin Maximus ends up telling him, dude, you got to run. Oh, you didn't see that episode yet. Sorry. Him and Maximus end up meeting back up later on. And, you know, he tells Maximus, yeah, I think I might be a ghoul. And he knows that, you know, if the Brotherhood finds out, they'll shoot him down. No questions asked. So now they have a common, they have some common ground. They <laughs> do. But I don't know if we're going to see him again in the, the, you know, the next couple of seasons. I hope we do. I'd love to kind of, like, get a follow-up and see um, as he's transitioning more and more into a ghoul as his skin is beginning to peel off because it's not, like, a, a, a process that happens overnight. It's more gradual as you, Over you the know, next 200 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe he'll even come back as a feral ghoul. Oh, well, then... Yeah. Xmas would have to kill him. <laughs> I I am happy to hear that if they're going to continue with the same vault dweller, because I was a little worried at one point. I'm like, are they going to go so much like the game that every season is a new vault dweller? <laughs> and every season, because every game you're you're it's never the same character. It's a new vault well, in a new city. I have a feeling that um, in the next season, I think we're going to get so okay. Here's here's a bit of a what's next. A patented, not your status quo. What's next? 
my theory is in the next season, we're going to still follow Lucy and Maximus and probably the ghoul as well, but since they're like our main characters. But I also think we're going to follow Lucy's brother since he's done so much in the way of uh, investigating the other vaults and finding out uh, the truth. Um, he ends up wandering into Vault 31, and he's he's the one who finds out. He's the one that shows us, basically, uh, all of the, the cryogenic containers. And he finds out the truth behind what's been happening with these three vaults. But the door closes behind him. And well, there is a robo-brain. <laughs> Keith, you know what that is. There's a robo-brain in there that basically tells him, there's no way to open that door. You're stuck in here. But... Your father's chamber is still over there empty. So if you crawl in there, you won't starve to death. Well, who knows how long he'll be out. That's true. So I don't know if we're going to see him again in season two, maybe season three. I I'm not sure. But Have they been approved for a season two yet? Yes, they were yeah, yeah, season two. Was. Season two. Yep. Cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been getting a lot of... Uh, like I said, except for the the couple of you know loud, angry voices uh, on the internet, it's been getting some pretty rave reviews. In the how, game, how dare they have a female it. protagonist? Right. In the game, do you play as Lucy? No, no. Uh, I mean, I was gonna say, in can, the you game, you play as whoever you want. Dweller, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say. I mean, if that's the way the game is, what what are they complaining about? I mean, at the very yeah. least, I don't have a complaint with it for having a lead female character. That's so stupid. In the beginning of the games, it's a character creation thing. You can play a male, a female. You can play a, a black, white, brown, blue, purple. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, I don't understand. You create I the really character. It's a role-playing game. Up the same channels, but I just can't stand. That's what I don't hate. get either. You know, you don't even give it a chance before you hate it. It's just like. It, right. you, you get clicks, just hate everything. Yeah, it'd be and it, like watching the new really Joker is. trailer and hating it. Yeah, well, that's me. <laughs> no, you just, don't okay, like the, you just don't like the trailer. Which is oh. funny because, you know, we've seen trailers we've loved and the show was terrible. And we've mm -hmm. seen trailers we didn't like so much and then the show turned out great. Yeah. Because if you go back, I think if you went back and we talked about it earlier and watched the trailer for The Last Jedi. Because we even have a breakdown of it on our channel. It's a damn I'm good I'm probably looking trailer. forward to it. Yeah. Because it, I mean, it didn't have any of the stuff you didn't like in it. It was just basically, you know, Ray and you see Luke kind of semi-training -tra her a bit. And, and, you know, hearing him say, you know, it's time for the Jedi to die. I just think, you know, like, we always say Zack Snyder. He has great trailers. If that guy's job was making trailers, he'd be <laughs> right. number one. But when he has to fill out the rest of the movie, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Did you hear, I'm going to change it again for a second. Did you hear Zack Snyder is talking about going back and fixing Sucker Punch? Fix Like what the director's cut? What needs to be He's fixed? Alone, man. What? How what needs to be fixed? I don't think anything. That's one of the only movies I like by him. Huh. I mean, the actors are all, what, 15 years older? What, he's going to re do, do yes. reshoots? That was 2011. So it's like, no, dude, just, you got, he's probably got some footage and then he's going to ask, ask the studio for like $80 million to de-age these. They're like, going to say no. Just stop. If you want to make a good movie, just make a good movie. Don't come back later and say, I can fix it. Oh, he doesn't know how to do that, Dave. That's his MO. That's my we, we've off. known it forever. Even with Rebel Moon, it's like, okay, uh, this one's coming out, but guess what? There's an R-rated you know, director's cut coming next year, and part two is going to come out, but it's the non-director's cut, and then the director's cut of part two is going to come out, because I didn't like the way these turned out, even though I had absolute creative control over everything. Right, yeah. Dave, didn't yeah. you say part two is coming out uh, like the, in a couple of weeks or something? No, I think Next it's a couple Friday. days. Yeah, I think it's... In the 19th, Friday. Ah, all right. I'm well, not watching it. For those of you we tuning in next Sunday to hear our review of Rebel Moon Part 2, we won't be having it. <laughs> <laughs> we can't 
cannot afford to rate a movie in the negative, so we will not be doing that movie. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was. <laughs> What's your rating? Uh... <laughs> What's your rating? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Did you just make a fart noise? No, no, no. I made an actual fart. <laughs> and it stinks like diarrhea. So I wish this was smell vision because it truly captures what I felt about that film. That still smells better than that movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what would you guys, well, Doug, would you like to rate Fallout? Yeah, I can't rate it yet. Only Doug yeah. can rate yeah, I I will rate it. Um, I found I found almost nothing wrong with this, save for like you know a few moments where I guess it it felt a bit slow. There was a couple of things that it uh, it felt like they the showrunners felt it was necessary to uh, to world build. I think more than maybe they needed to. I don't know. Uh, I suppose maybe it was useful. For uh, uh, for folks that aren't familiar with the world of, of Fallout, so there was a couple of moments where it was like, um, it was really good overall, but a few moments where I was like, okay, come on, let's let's move it along, let's get to the next thing, let's what's going to happen next. But the the story with the ghoul from beginning to end that is probably one of my favorite parts of this whole series, just the ups and downs and as you learn more about him and as you see everything that he went through and as you find out like just the the crushing look in his face just as an actor Walton Goggins just really portrayed it so well he he looked like he was devastated as he's listening to his wife over this uh, earpiece basically say um you know it would be a great idea if we drop some nuclear bombs and if we have these fallout shelters uh, where we're experimenting on people and just this look in his face like, oh my God, who did I marry? Who is this person? And so it really, you know, brings to light everything that he's gone through and what drives him to be, you know, the ghoul, the gunslinger, this, this, uh, you know, um, bounty hunter, this person everybody wants. And I'd say, you know, even though I didn't like his character at first, I think his story is the most complete so far. And uh, I, I think I've grown to like him the most. Um, I really liked the portrayal of the Brotherhood of Steel, even if they had to kind of keep things sort of vague with uh, the um, the chapter that came aboard uh, with uh, the airship. Obviously, because, you know, there's no official canon ending for Fallout 4 yet. Uh, you know, there's... Um, you you can side with a number of the different factions, and so it can end a whole bunch of different ways. And, that, you know, that's... Like we were saying, uh, Dave, how you can create your character to be whoever or whatever you want. You can end these games in a number of different ways, so it can make it difficult to give one solid answer, this is who these people are, this is where they came from, without deciding that this is how the previous game ended. And I know that that would have upset a lot of people who played the game, so I get why they didn't do that as well. But all the attention to detail that they had, the character development, the world building, and just really hitting the nail on the head with the dark humor, all the little Easter eggs that they had in there for, you know, longtime fans of the game series. I got to give this an easy, an easy 9.5 out of 10. 9.6? No. <laughs> we we already discussed this. You know, we talked we about this. I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's my review right now. Nine point five out of ten. Um, I this is one of those where I would definitely watch it again. So you're saying I, I it really is a felt must like, see for fans of the games. And for it is a must see, but not game. only. Yes, yes, it is a must see, not only for fans of the game, but for people who aren't because. They give you just enough, I think, to pull you into the world, to kind of suck you in. So even if you have nothing going in, if you have never played the games, you don't know anything about the story, um, they they don't, you know, drop you in not knowing it. They kind of, uh, they hold your hand and they explain everything. And um, they don't tell you, they don't, uh, you know, speak 
the plot at you they show you and i love that they did that so well throughout this uh throughout this first season where everything is seen in the visuals of the world in people's actions this was the complete opposite of a snyder movie <laughs> they could have saved a lot of money if they just light enough too they're just they're, it's not too heavy of a topic it it is it's kind of a heavy topic. Yeah. But at the same time, they keep the show very light. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious, uh, Dave, I know you didn't finish it yet, but what is your rating so far? What do you think of it so far? Through four and a half episodes? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I kind of like how they got, you know, like you said that's her brother doing all the research. He's a kind of a completely separate storyline because he's mm-hmm. not in contact with anybody on the surface. And, well, I don't know if it happens later, but as far as I like how they're they got different uh, storylines for above and underground, you know, mm-hmm. and they're <clears throat> um, keeping it moving. I think the best, like, the mood changes when Lucy appears on the screen. No matter what's happening, it lightens up. You know what I mean? Because she's so pure, and she's so um, she even says it herself. She's naive, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just talking about, and she's just so positive. And it, you know, she's not letting everything drag her down yet. Yet, I say, right. So so far, through four and a half episodes, I'm going to give it an eight. I, eight. I really do like a lot, and that you know, for me, that's a big rating. I mean, it have to be near perfect for me to go higher than that. Mm-hmm. I like how her. Uh, I like how her tagline is "Okie dokie." <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Keith, you've only seen one episode, but what are your thoughts so far just based on the first episode? I mean, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, it was like 75 minutes long. It was funny because I looked at all the timelines because I was like, okay, I, I probably get some watching in here. And I was like, 75 minutes, you know, 67 minutes. I'm like, oh, no, no way I'm going to finish. But I definitely <laughs> wanted to watch the first episode. And I mean, just the way it started and all the characters and like you said i mean the vault looked like the vaults you see in the game and even when he went into that vault that was decimated by the raiders that looked like vaults you visited in the game like you it was what you know the, the things open and obviously been raided and you're digging through it and finding mm-hmm. out information and i just thought uh, you know the level of details they added to match the games was just phenomenal and all the acting was good you know, all the things going on. Obviously, you can tell from the first episode, there's a lot of different plot lines, you know, going different ways. To find out they wrap it all up and it sounds like it all kind of comes together and makes yeah. sense makes me very happy and I can't wait to finish it. So I'm going to give the first episode a nine because I loved it. I was like, it was. I watched it this morning before the kids got up and I was like, do I have time to watch another? And then, you know, my son comes bouncing <laughs> down the stairs and I'm like, Okay, probably <laughs> nope. cannot. <laughs> a little too violent for them. <laughs> yeah, especially. Yeah, I was a little surprised with how great it was. <laughs> <laughs> I think it helped that, you know, v- Invincible does it and the boys do it. It probably would have been a lot harder to convince these people to allow that, like it is in the game. Like Doug said, there's a, there's a perk called Bloody Mess that basically just causes gore beyond belief on the screen as you're shooting people. So. It was good to see. I'm excited to see the rest of it. I was, you know, I really don't like the dropping it all at once because I don't have time to watch, you know, nine and a half hours of television in a three-day period. My, my schedule just doesn't allow that with work and this and kids and all that other stuff. You know, I'd damn near kill myself just to watch them all. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. So, you know, everyone out there, please subscribe. Uh, send us, you know, uh, subscribe on here, subscribe on YouTube, send us money, buy our merch, all that, so we can do this full time. So we don't have to complain to you anymore that how hard it is to watch, you know, eight episode series in three days, please. For the love of all that is holy, help us all out. 
<laughs> hey fellow nerds, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more of this stuff, make sure that you check out our Twitch stream. We try to do these live Sunday or Monday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Keep an eye on our social media to find out when you can join in live and chat with us during these live streams. Also, as usual, don't forget to check out our other social media. Add us at Twitter, comment down below, and we'll see you next time right here on Not Your Status Quo. Thank you.